I was very ill and I was very depressive, you know, depressive. Um, I was depressed and I have a, a disease, a colon disease. Mm -hmm. I've been depressed a very long time, a lot of years, and I've tried really everything. <laughs> That's sometimes very hard to, and the, the pressure is uh, uh, big, high. I have a, a heart condition, a lung condition. Uh, I, I am diabetes, and I have, I don't know how you call it in English, thrombosis. Although, as a society, we believe that psychiatric medications have revolutionized the treatment of mental illness, the real fact is the United States is currently experiencing what we could call an epidemic of mental illness. As it turns out, between 1987, with the introduction of the new generation of psych drugs, and 2007, the number of Americans disabled due to mental illness more than doubled. And this, despite a whopping $40 billion annual expenditure on these new magic bullet psychopharmaceuticals. This epidemic has also profoundly affected our children. During this same period, the number of children who receive a federal payment because of severe mental illness has jumped from 16,000 to 561,000 a 35-fold increase. Despite these obvious failures of the current treatment paradigm, funding and research into alternative treatments and programs has been virtually non-existent in America. This could be cause for more despair, but in fact, there are new experiments going on, which now are seeking to improve both the economics and the outcome in treating mental illness. This film will take the viewer to a number of these innovative and sometimes inspiring programs. We start our journey in the Netherlands, where in 1998, the Dutch government funded a three-year experiment in what has come to be called care farming. This program, which was only a handful of farms in 1998, has now grown to more than a thousand in 2008. The program has been such a success for the Dutch that it has been adopted or copied by many other European countries. One of these remarkable farms is located in Barneveld, Holland. Ten years ago, I started an own company in advising farmers to uh, start new opportunities in their own farm. And then I got connected with some people who were working in the care farming. And so I started up with advisory and a project in uh, care farming because I thought this is um, 
an, an amazing concept. Um, uh, agriculture is needing in future new opportunities, but also care, you see, is looking for new opportunities for, for future. A neighbor of us presented a plan for a living and working farm for mental handicapped people. Myself, I have a brother with a mental handicap, he has Down syndrome. So at that moment, uh, it was uh, this wonderful uh, opportunity to, uh, to do this. Of course, uh, a big risk also because uh, we had well, no money and uh, we had to find a good investor. We found an investor. He was uh, willing to invest in um, these kind of societal farms. Uh, farms not only for profit, not only for purely, strictly a product, but a farm in the middle of the society, close connected to the people, and particular here, here uh, children and elderly people with a certain uh, limitation. I read it in the newspaper of its uh, existence and uh, at first I thought uh, uh, dirty and the cows and the pigs and uh, uh, not for me but um, I did take a look here and well I thought uh, why not I can try uh, better than sitting at home uh, all day and uh, then the store uh, became uh, more and more uh, interesting and I thought that's more uh, like for me than the animals. Um, and when we look at the, the let's say the, the effects for the clients we see at least we experience and all, this is also from interviews they um, indicate that, that they experience very positive uh, effects on their mental well-being they develop more self-esteem more responsibility people become more active. This is it? Okay, 10x. I'm very happy that uh, I found this farm. I, I don't think uh, I would have come this far in two years' time uh, without the farm. I think if I was at home, uh, I, I, would, I would be more depressed, I think. Because, yeah, it's really... And... Um, I can show what I can do, what I still can do, and not uh, sitting at home and oh, I can do, cannot do that and this and no. Oh. So uh, my talents are uh, coming out more here. All right, bye. Especially with elderly people, we see that they have a better appetite, they eat better, they use less drugs, uh, less medication. We also experience that they develop a better physical health. And that's, of course, that's logical because they are much more active than they are when they are not going to the care farm. And they also, they also develop kind of more social competences. So they learn to interact with other people. They develop new friendships on the farm. So you see more and more farmers that look for, I said, that are willing and enthusiastic to provide different kind of services and, and products than just food production. We see that all the participants here, they enjoy it. So they feel a better quality of life. That means they pass it on to their friends, relatives, partners, family. So that circle around the farm is also getting uh, inspired because they see that their family members, their partners are having a better quality of life.
Perhaps this concept of care farming is much older than we think. Maybe it goes back even to the 13th century, to a small village, Hale, in Belgium. It was here that a Celtic princess chose to lose her head rather than succumbing to her father's mad, incestuous demands for marriage. Over the years, miraculous cures came to be associated with the site of her martyrdom. And in 1247, the Pope declared her Saint Dimpha, patron saint of the mentally ill. A huge influx of pilgrims began visiting Hale in search of miracles. A new church dedicated to Saint Dimpha and containing some of her relics was begun in 1349, thus ensuring the continued influx of pilgrims. But of course, not everyone was cured. Hopeful families sometimes abandoned the afflicted family member when that miracle didn't happen. Before long, the overflow and the left behinds became a real problem in Hale. So in the 15th century, the church and the local gentry instructed the villagers to house, and in many cases, use these wayward pilgrims on their farms. This practical solution gave birth to Hale's legendary and centuries-old system of foster care for the mentally ill. It goes back to the 1500s, um, but it still exists. It's, it's still alive because foster parents still come and knock on our door and um, tell us, well, we want to be involved in the program. It's not like we'd have to uh, set up really you know, big campaigns to recruit foster families. It, it's still quite alive in the community. And what is also quite remarkable is that the whole community supports it. It's not just the foster families, it's not just us as a psychiatric hospital, but it's actually the entire community that's involved. Um, if, if our clients go to, for instance, a shop, they're welcome and they're helped, and if they have display very odd behavior, it's, you know, it isn't frowned upon, it's just generally accepted. We decided to see if this ancient tradition was still part of Cheol and went in search of a farmer that might be part of this unique program. What we found could have served as the original model for today's care farms. Maar nou is de grote vraag, waarom als gezin neem je zo iemand in huis met zo'n geestesziekte? Het ging over het werkje dan te krijgen. Ja, ja, hier wel. Daar ging het helemaal over. Not all care farms are located in the rural countryside. Near the large city of Amsterdam, there is an organization called Landzijde, which has 105 diverse farms, nurseries, and vineyards, all working with the green care movement. Landside is um, a label, a brand, a brand for care farms in Amsterdam and the surrounding of Amsterdam. When you look at the environment of Amsterdam, it's mostly uh, meadows, so we have a lot of farms with uh, cows. We have also uh, pig farms, uh, apple farms, uh, fruit farms, also winery, 
uh, somebody who is very close to Amsterdam, who makes a very beautiful wine. This is a bad year, but most of the times in good years he makes terrific wine and they're working uh, about 30 clients. We have started in 2003 and I can say it's a real strong brand. And when you have a strong brand, if you have a brand in food or a brand in uh, a drink, Heineken, um, then people are asking for you. And Landseide is a strong brand and people are asking for us now. And those people are people in the city, uh, helpers, workers on institutions. We have contracts with the city. I think in Amsterdam only about 20, 20 of those contracts. Well, we work with uh, counselling um, plans. So um, in every counselling uh, project or plan that we have with every client, we uh, discuss their family situation, their uh, financial situation, uh, their social situation, and also the working or occupational therapy. Each time when a care worker of that institution knows somebody who uh, fits on the farm or asks for a farm is because of our brand. Uh, we can make it possible in a few days when they are calling us. I think most of the times so within a week we have a place to offer them. Of course it also is very depending on the energy of the client, the motivation of the client, um, the, is he really willing to do something, yes or no. And normally you notice that a lot of them at the beginning um, they want to do something but you need a lot of initiative to get there. So um, what I do as a counsellor, instead of like just offering them all kinds of different alternatives, I take, for example, two or three social care farms and then I just go with them there. They invite us to come and look here. So I came here and I look and I said, OK, I want to try that. So that's how it starts. And I was... Uh, when I saw it here, it was, for me it was okay. I thought, this is nice, I like to do it. We go with the slaap beginnen. Yeah? I had a client the other day, she told me, Valerie, it was so nice because I was under the shower and I was all tired, but I was like so proud that I did it. And because it's throughout a physical manifestation and then they can see the result very easily. Do you enjoy planting? I enjoy the planting, yes. I enjoy it, and it's very nice to do it. Uh, the, the people where I live tell me to come here to get a job, so that I don't have to be burning home all day, sitting and sleeping and don't do nothing. That you have something to do, so that you can go something further, so, so that you don't have to get angry on stupid things in house that somebody may get you angry you get you learn how to go with people arm and not to fight how to get more friends here that yeah so you get it here to to live most people don't have friends here and here they and on the job they get friends and you learn how to plant the thing and you get school also from by here and uh and it's very nice to do it. And if you see that it's come bigger and uh, have food, you think, oh, I do a good job. <laughs> we have an intake for farms, uh, the same as we have for the clients or for the people who are working with us. We have to do an intake so we can be sure that um, he contributes something to the whole thing, Landseide. So we do a lot of things for the people who are working with us, but we do the same things with our farmers to get them better every day. If you want to be a part of Landseide, Landseide wants quality. So uh, they want to have uh, you, uh, all the farmers 
to do the study and uh, follow a quality program. We learn about the clients and their problems. We learn about uh, how to run a farm financially. Uh, we learn about diseases with plants and animals. So we learn all kinds of things, farming and caring, and how to put it together. And the most important thing is we, we ask to farmers what can you contribute to other people? What can other people learn from you? How can you make them a better man or woman? Most of the children, uh, they have autism and they are staying at our farm. They do everything, like the cooking, they cut their own vegetables, they grow their own vegetables, they feed the animals with the leftovers from the vegetables. I show them how uh, a, a little chicken grows in the egg. So we do everything. We believe in empowerment. If you have good circumstances to, 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 for people to work together, to, to behave themselves, to do real work sometimes. But it can also be on the farm, just be there and uh, help yourself. It uh, starts with being, uh, being happy, feeling happy and getting more active out of that first start of empowerment. What I think that it's for me like a big goal actually for them is um, that they're just treated as normal people. They're just treated like one more in society. They do a job just like any other people. And um, you feel that they start to get reintegrated in society because there are many people working in, uh, in farm. It's not, it's not just people with like uh, mental problems or addictions, but all kinds of different backgrounds. We get a 10 euro to a day and some food so that you can buy a pocket of tobacco or so something else that you have some money in your pocket that you don't have to do nothing and, and sit and get lonely. And it's very important for those people, they do real work, so you have to pay them. When it's about money, only about money, it's for a short time. Uh, we see a lot of uh, people working with us for a very long time do that because they're sleeping better, because they're feeling better, because they meet other people, because they get, they empower themselves, they get a better woman, a better man of doing some work. I was very locked up in myself and I didn't talk with people and I was a lot iller than I am now. In the house where I live, all the people are sick. So, and there are a lot of people who, are, who have self-pity. And I hate that, you know, you sit there and all what they talk about is diseases. So when you sit there and you have one big room where we sit all together, you know, drink coffee and smoke a cigarette, they all talk about diseases. And if you sit there, you get depressed. The one, he wants to kill himself. The other one wants to die. This one don't talk at all. This one uh, have this, this one have that. So there is nothing to laugh at. So you get depressed from yourself. It's the green environment, it's whether, whether it's plants, whether it's meadows, whether, whether there are, it's trees, it's about trees. It's always green that comes instead of blue, white and yellow pills. That's the most important issue, what I think. Nowadays, the ultimate goal of uh, care farming is, um, is uh, not the growing of the crops, but the cultivating and the perfection of the human being. As we have seen, in Holland, the small-scale family farm is still around and very busy reinventing itself. What will the future hold? And can this model be applied to a larger world where food production and social care are of increasing concern to all? I, I think in that way, we, we present a new lifestyle, a new way of linking nature, people, uh, uh, green care, things like that. So in that perspective, I think it has a lot of scope. And the interesting thing is in the, when this started, it was 
mainly people with learning disability that came to the care farm. But now you see a huge diversity of different groups going to the care farm. And it seems that the care farm is, is, pos is positive for almost everyone in society. What these care farms make a success to these people, I think it's a combination of three factors. One is uh, contact with the nature, another one is contact with more people, and the third one is that they get suddenly a meaningful job that provides them a daily structure. Yeah. <laughs> Ja, 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 ja.